Hello, everyone. Welcome to Divine Conversations. My name is Eric. Thank you so much for tuning in. A big old shout out and welcome to those of you that are new to the channel. Thank you so much for joining the family. You're, you're so welcome here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And for those of you that are returning, what is up, squad? So welcome to your readings for November 2019. A big shout out goes out to those Scorpios. Yeah, very happy birthday to the Scorpios. And also a very happy birthday to the November Sagittarians, yes? Can you guys believe that we are almost done with 2019? Like, this is a little bit crazy. We are getting into 2020 soon. That is super exciting. I hope you guys have had a really great year so far, but we're not quite there yet. So. These are your messages for the month of November. Please keep in mind that these readings are general. Yes, these messages are general. So please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. If you would like a look into your own situation, please don't hesitate to email me. All of the information, including my email address and the readings that I offer, uh, their prices and a description of those readings are found in the description box below. Yes. For those of you that are new to my channel, what I will be doing in this monthly reading is what I call the freestyle or general freestyle reading. Yeah. If you would like to get a reading with me, I highly recommend that you start with that one as that is really quite a one size fits all type of reading. We could really get you some really awesome information, uh, very clarity into a look on what's going on, whatever question or situation you are interested in gaining greater clarity on. Yeah. Also, if you are new to the channel, please understand that number one, I am not a fortune teller. Okay. So what I'm doing here, what my goal is to give you guys is to get a look into the energy surrounding you right now and to give you guys a clearer understanding of what those energies are so that you can make a, a decision that is best for yourself moving forward in your life. Yes. Again, please keep in mind that these readings are general and I'm going to, for the most part, I'm going to be talking to the uh, sun sign or star sign. I should say star sign because it's not just your sun sign. This is sun, moon, rising and Venus, but I'm going to be talking to the sign that's in question, mostly looking at it from their point of view. So if you're a cross watcher, keep that in mind. But also if I'm speaking to this, and you're uh, speaking to this point from the point of view that you're the, the sign that you're looking at because it's the sign that is in your chart, but it's not resonating as you're the person that should be spoken to here. Maybe you're the person on the other side of the equation, then please take it as it resonates. Yes. Okay. Um, also keep in mind that just because these are monthly readings, like they're dated for the month of November, it doesn't mean it has to resonate for the month of November of 2019. All the readings on my, on my channel are meant to be timeless. Also keep in mind that this is general. All right. We're, so we're talking about anything that spirit wants to bring forward to you or wants to bring to your attention. This is not love career or, or, or sp specific like that in any sort of way. Although career may come up or career may resonate for you or love may come up and that may resonate for you too. Okay. But this is just an over open-ended overall look at the energies in your life. Yeah. I would absolutely love it if you guys would connect with me on social media. I am on Instagram at divine underscore conversations. And I do like to go live just about every once in a week to do a, uh, a collective check-in energy check-in for the Insta fam. So if you're not following me there, please, I highly recommend that you do so. Let's connect on social media. I'm also on Facebook, um, uh, facebook.com slash divine conversations. Now here's the thing about it. First of all, all, both of those links are in the description box below, but um, if you would like to get a reading with me, I highly recommend that you just email me or at the very least you can message me on Instagram. But even if you do that, I'll just be directing you to email. Uh, Facebook is not the best option to connect with me, to send a message to me or something like that, or even to try and book a reading mainly because it's not always reliable in notification, uh, as to when I get messages on Facebook. Um, and I don't always remember to check it all that frequently. So you run the risk of either completely me, completely missing your message or getting back to you at a really later, t really late time. So if you would like to, please, if you can go ahead and give me a like on Facebook and all that and connect with me there. But if you would like to get a reading from me, or if you would like to contact me in some way, email or at the very least, very least Instagram is your best way of doing that. Yes. Um, so for the readings for this month, I'm keeping with my normal and I'm using the golden universal tarot for our tarot spread and then keeping with the fall atmosphere, the fall feel, 
I'm going to be pulling Oracle Guidance from the Fairy Forest deck. I love this deck and it's so awesome. And it's been really, really spot on for this month. It was really spot on for last month as well. I'm really super excited for you guys to see these readings because I feel like overall they're really, really great messages, okay? So with that said, let's get to it. Hey there, Scorpio. Welcome to your reading for November 2019. Thank you so much for tuning in. All right, guys, let's jump right into your pre-shuffle energies. So the first card that came out for the pre-shuffle for your month of November is the Nine of Cups. And um, obviously, the Nine of Cups is about wish fulfillment. I really feel like you're overcoming something with this Nine of Cups energy. Um, it may be something that you've been dealing with for a long time. Uh, and I did look at underneath the deck when this card came out and it was the devil, okay? So there's some sort of maybe fear or maybe even conformity. And actually it's a conformity that I heard specifically that you may be overcoming, that you may be breaking free of. But I kept shuffling from there because I wanted to get some more energy, more information on this and a whole mess of cards came dumping out, um, which include the Empress, Four of Cups, the Hierophant, Ten of Pentacles, Temperance, King of Cups, which is your energy, Scorpio, Eight of Pentacles, and the Seven of Cups, okay? Overall energy of the Page of Pentacles here. Let's talk about this. The Hierophant is where I'm getting, um, other than the fact that I heard it, you know, clairaudiently, um, the Hierophant also represents some sort of conformity. It represents institution, um, society, uh, government, military, um, societal norms, uh, uh, societal traditions, fam familial traditions, and all that kind of stuff, right? Um, and it seems, it seems here with the Empress and the Four of Cups, <clears throat> coupled with the Hierophant, I feel like there was a missed opportunity here between a masculine and a feminine. We're not talking gender, we're talking, uh, we're talking, I'm sorry, yes, we're not talking gender, we're talking energy here, all right? Everybody has masculine and feminine energy within them. We all resonate with that, with either one of those to different degrees. Some of us resonate more as, or identify more as a feminine energy. Others represent or identify more as a masculine energy. Again, this is regardless of gender. But what I'm getting here is there was a missed opportunity in terms of being in a relationship or something like that with a feminine energy, which is represented here by the Empress. Um, and it was due to some form of some form of conformity. Uh, uh, I'm hearing societal norms or societal roles, which also could represent gender roles or gender norms. Okay, um, and then so, but but the good thing here, the good thing that I'm seeing, there's progress being made because you have the Ten of Pentacles with Temperance and the King of Cups. Again, Scorpio, this is your energy, but this actually doesn't have to be you. Again, I really do feel like we're talking to, uh, 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 well, actually, I didn't say this, but um, I feel like we're talking to a masculine energy right now. We're just in the pre-shuffle, guys. We haven't gotten into the rest of the reading for the month, but let's see what, let's just talk about this for a second. Um, it seems that there is a lesson that has been learned here. I do see the Ten of Cups. I'm not, sorry, not the Ten of Cups. <laughs> Maybe that's what you're moving towards. But, I mean, you're only one step away from it with this Nine of Cups energy here, but I'm ref referring to the Ten of Pentacles. In my opinion, as a reader, the Ten of Pentacles represents, um, uh, yes, it does represent finances, career, uh, family, established, um, something that's been established for a while, um, longevity, uh, uh, family lineage, stuff like that. But it also can, in my opinion, as a reader, it also represents a lesson being learned and a completion of a cycle here on the earth plane. And we do come to earth to learn, to grow and to expand and to experience and ultimately become a greater version of ourselves than we were before. And the Ten of Pentacles can represent that in terms of having less, having learned a lesson or completed a lesson here on earth and now being able to move forward, um, about, move past that and on to basically the next lesson. So you have the Ten of Pentacles here. You do have Temperance with the King of Cups. In my opinion, the King of Cups represents emotional maturity, emotional responsibility, stepping forward on what it is that your heart desires, leading with your heart, and all that good stuff, yes? <clears throat> with Temperance here, I do feel like there is a process that you're going through right now to, um, to integrate the lessons from this cycle that you're overcoming, that you're completing, um, to basically temper yourself into this new version. 
king of cups yes finally then you have the seven of cups with the eight of pentacles in my opinion here this is or as a reader what i'm picking up here is this is the process that you're going through uh that is representative of temperance right here so you can say you can see the seven of cups as all the different elements or are or, or parts of yourself that you're probably in the process of going through weeding through coming to an understanding of and um figuring out what to do with them maybe if you need to let them go completely or um evolve them a little bit or integrate them in a different way somehow some what what whatever that is the process that you're in right now that is <laughs> that is that just scared the crap out of me <laughs> i'm gonna I'm, actually i think can you guys see it yeah you can see it so you see that bag down there <laughs> that's my dresser and there is a, a bunch of like plastic bags shopping bags just kind of like stuffed back there and before I started doing this reading I was like I'm going to stuff you all back there so you can't be seen and what happened one of them fell out and I it scared the crap out of me I was like what the hell is that okay anyway I'll fix that later but anyway what we're talking about here is Eight of Pentacles, Seven of Cups. Seven of Cups is all the different options, everything that you're weeding through. Eight of Pentacles is the hard work and the process. Um, the this is this can be tiring. This can feel very mundane. This can feel very um, mechanical, even. You know what I mean. Um, but the Eight of Pentacles represents that hard work, the, 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 the process of doing something over and over again, either to perfect something or to create multiples of the same product, as you see here with that Eight of Pentacles, right? But this is the work that you're doing to bring yourself into greater balance. Given the lessons that you learned, Ten of Pentacles, in, all, in, in this experience here. And what I do really, what I really feel like here is this empress, again, we're not talking about gender, okay? We're talking about energy, but the, the individual that is representative of this empress energy is so non-conformist, not conformist at all. It literally is kind of the exact opposite. In, me in many ways, you can look at it as the exact opposite of the hierophant because the hierophant is rigid, is stern, is fixed, is pretty judgmental, is... Um, is a conformist or requires conformity um, in, 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 in a lot of different ways. Whereas the Empress is unconditionally loving, uh, non-binary, non yeah, sure, I just heard that. A non-conformist doesn't care what her children do, say, act like, whatnot, whatever, how they wish to express themselves. She just loves them and wants them to be happy. And that's the energy that that this person gives off. Whereas I feel like you, Scorpio, now take keep in mind this is a general reading, so it could go either way. It doesn't have to be you, Scorpio. You, Scorpio, could be this Empress energy. Or you could be, uh, well, let me say it this way. You could be under the influence of this Empress energy. Or you could be under the influence of this, um, ooh, I wanted to say masculine energy. Uh, because this is masculine. Uh, or Hierophant energy, right? But... This empress here is, is the complete opposite of that. And I do really feel uh, of the Hierophant. And I do really feel like you've definitely, somebody has learned a lesson here, Ten of Pentacles, which is allowing them to step into a, a sense of emotional maturity, which helps this person understand that there is really no need to conform. There really is no need to conform. You can be exactly who you are meant to be and still be beneficial to the world, still be loved, still be cared for, still be appreciated for who you are, right? Page of Pentacles at the bottom of the deck right now represents this new level that you're coming into, Scorpio. Um, the Page of Pentacles, in my opinion, as a reader, represents a level up, okay? So this is like an energy of you coming into a new energetic state or a new physical state um, and learning how to exist in this new state also because the Page of Pentacles can represent being a student, right? The apprentice even. That's the apprenticeship energy and all that kind of stuff. And if you want to look at it that way, then right, you got you reached this new level here, okay? You're moving into emotional maturity with the King of Cups, right? Emotional responsibility. Ooh, there's more. There's also a decision. Okay. You're moving into emotional responsibility here. Um, and you're basically an apprentice in this new energy in this new energetic field in this new physical reality here all right it also does look like wow okay seven of pentacles is now at the bottom of the deck okay so there's definitely a lesson that has been learned here 
and this this card, the Seven of Pentacles, has been coming up a lot. And what I'm hearing right now is you reap what you've sown, right? And someone is uh, is coming. <laughs> Someone is coming to terms with that. Someone is starting to understand that because now you have the hanged man and the two of wands. There's some sort of decision that's trying to be made, a new direction that someone is moving in. They're not really ready to move in this direction yet. They're not really ready to make this decision because they're still gaining the wisdom or the enlightenment from this. Okay, Seven of Pentacles. The Seven of Pentacles, yes, is you reap what you've sown. It's also a, an energy of learning through the contrast, but also it can be a very contemplative energy because with the Seven of Pentacles, you're at a harvest, right? And you're, good God, Seven of Cups, King of Cups, Four of Cups, the Fool now, okay. Um, and look, there's that Ten of Cups there. Okay, so, but with the Seven of Pentacles, um, you're at a harvest period or you're at a period where you're assessing what it is that you're growing and you're like, okay, is this what I want? Yes or no, okay? If it's yes, great, excellent. Yeah, see, this is what we're talking about, seven of pentacles. <laughs> yes, excellent, okay, that's what you want. Keep going, moving forward. If it's not what you want though, then you have to sit back and say, okay, well, how did I get here? And you have to go through your process that led up until this point to bear fruit that you're now looking at and say, finding dissatisfaction with, right? And so from there, then you, then you take new steps to hopefully change your crop, right? Okay. Excellent, excellent, excellent. This is a very good energy for you, Scorpio. Very, very good energy, all right? Uh, give me a second. I'm just going to reset, and then we'll get 11-11. I literally just saw 11-11 on the counter. And then, whoop, and then we'll get into the rest of the reading here. Sorry, I'm a little jumpy right now. Are you guys feeling anxious? Don't be anxious. Everything's okay. Everything's okay, Scorpio, I promise. All right, here we go. Ooh. All right, let's see what we've got for this month for you, Scorpio. Hi, spirit. <laughs> Please make me a clear channel for all Scorpios, sun, moon, rising, and Venus. Please bring forward the best messages, the, <laughs> excuse me, the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for the month of November, 2019. Thank you so much, spirit. All right, guys, we're giving this five shuffles. Let's see what we've got for you, Scorpio. One. Two. Scorpio, for my Scorpios. Three. Four. From a Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for the month of November 2019. And a five. All right. Let's cut the deck. Boop. All right, Scorpio. Overall energy. We're starting you off with the Knight of Cups. Well. Well, well, well. Someone wants to make some sort of an emotional offer. Sure. Um, I do I do kind of feel like this is an element of you stepping into um, emotional responsibility. The knights are about movement, right? And the cups energy, uh, the cup suit is all about emotions and also potentially intuition. But it's really mostly about the emotions, yes? And what I'm seeing with this Knight of Cups energy for you, Scorpio, is some is, is the fact that someone here, and this could be you or this could be someone that you're connected with, but someone wants to move forward with maybe a mo an emotional offer or this is learning how to lead with your heart. This definitely could be a part of that apprenticeship energy that I was picking up on with the Page of Pentacles before, okay? Underneath the Knight of Cups, Okay, well, you have the Page of Cups. This is, the Page of Cups is the dreamer energy. It's also a reconciliatory energy. It could be an I'm sorry, what not, whatever. Um, it's, but it's also, yes, the dreamer energy. Um, wow, underneath the Page of Cups, the High Priestess, and finally, the Three of Pentacles. Okay, well, 
Um, I kind of, honestly, Scorpio, what I want to say here is it feels like you're taking some cues from the feminine now because you have, these are, these are the counterparts, the high, the Hierophant and the High Priestess. Yes, they are counterparts. So whereas you, you, you or someone you were connect, you're connected with was under the influence of the Hierophant, we'll say in the past, now you or this person is under the influence of the high priestess, okay? So this is the feminine energy, this is psychic ability, this is deeper wisdom of the universe. Deeper wisdom that the Hierophant doesn't really represent because the Hierophant is very much about the three-dimensional world, the physical the physical plane and whatnot, whereas the high priestess and company, en encompasses or even embodies the rest of the universe that's... <laughs> Basically, that's not physically oriented, which is vast. Okay, the Hierophant's teachings and energies are very limited, whereas the f the, the, the 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 I'm sorry, the High Priestess is like unlimited. She is she is universal wisdom, knowledge, and all of that. And so it really looks like. And now now don't get me wrong. I don't. I'm not trying to say the Hierophant or the High Priestess either one of them are better than the other. No, they're counterparts. They're integral parts of, they're, they're two parts of the same whole. They, together, together they make the whole of existence, right? They're just two focal points and two points of understanding that they represent, okay? But here, somebody is under the influence of the feminine energy or universal wisdom, universal knowledge. They're expanding their view. They're starting to lead with their heart. They're working on self-mastery or your, I'm saying they, but I could be talking to you, Scorpio, whatever, take it as it resonates. But someone here is working on self-mastery, building a better foundation for themselves, building a better reality for themselves in terms of or encompassing what they're learning, the downloads that they're getting, the information that they're gaining from the high priestess, okay? Excellent, 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 excellent. Now, the other thing about this that this can mean is the high priestess is about secrecy, right? She knows all, but she ain't telling you nothing until you're ready to know, yes? Um, so this could mean for some of you out there, maybe a cross watcher for a Scorpio or something like that. Um, you don't see this happening in the, in, in the, in, in the physical world. Like you, you probably don't see this happening. This is probably happening behind the scenes here. Okay. Just wanted to put that out there. All right. Getting into the rest of your reading here, Scorpio, first set of surrounding energies you have. Ah, the Ace of Swords. Would you look at that? Knowledge, truth, understanding, aha moment, the epiphanies, the light bulbs and whatnot, whatever. And I do feel like this Ace of Swords is coming from what you're learning, or should I say, the downloads that you're getting from the High Priestess energy here, okay? Ace of Swords is coupled with, yes, judgment, wake up call. So this could very, quite literally be, Scorpio, that you are gaining some information, some knowledge, some downloads that are waking you up. The Ace of Swords with judgment is very much a, a, an awakening energy. Absolutely, okay? The Ace of Swords is truth, honesty, integrity, um, seeing something clearly. It could also be, because it's a sword, it, also, it could also be cutting some things out of your life, which would, not, would happen naturally with an awakening here, okay? All right, Scorpio. I mean, you're, you're kicking off your birthday season with a bang, it looks like. Okay. And, and happy birthday to you. <laughs> I say this is pretty freaking awesome. Second set of surrounding energies for you, Scorpio, in the first half of your reading. There you are again, the King of Cups. But again, you guys, this is emotional maturity. You're going from the page to the knight to the king. We don't have the queen here, but that's okay. We're really talking of, I really feel like we're talking of masculine energies here, whether you're a man or a woman, it really does not matter. And even if you, even if you resonate more with feminine energy, this could be something that's happening with your own inner masculine energy because we all have masculine and feminine energies within, okay? But I'm, I'm definitely getting a sense of emotional maturity here with this King of Cups energy. King of Cups is coupled with Damn, guys, the seven of pentacles again. Whoa. Yo, someone really looks like they're either taking actively taking responsibility or are starting to take responsibility or are looking to take responsibility here. 
for their actions in the past, however they may have hurt somebody or however they may have acted in some unscrupulous ways, like whatever. It doesn't matter. Take it as it resonates, but wow. <laughs> wow, Scorpio. Someone, wow. Someone is really growing up here. Taking responsibility. And I heard, and I just heard taking matters into their own hands. All right. All right. Cool. Your challenge in the first half of your reading here, Scorpio, Knight of Wands. Okay, so there may be some hastiness due to this. There may be um, a desire to really move forward. Um, you may be feeling, especially with all of this change that's happening, you may be inspired to really move forward. But uh, if, it, if, this is, if this does represent haste for you, your challenge is to not be hasty. Is Your challenge is to not put the, the horse before the cart, okay? So there are still some things that you need to figure out. There are still some things that you're working on understanding before you could really probably make any sort of moves, but it looks like you're going through that process, so that's a good thing. The other thing that this could mean is the Knight of Wands, in my opinion, as a reader, is indicative of a light worker energy or a torch bearer, um, definitely of an awakening. Someone being awakened, someone being enlightened, and someone actively sharing or sh spreading that light, which literally could, doesn't have to be anything more than just embodying that light and allowing it to shine. Not really seeking to like for people to enlighten, not really trying to get on a soapbox and preach, but just be yourself. Embody that energy, that truth, that light that you that you naturally have that is yours to begin with, and let, let just letting that shine purely. Okay. That could be a challenge, though. Even though you're, you're, you're growing up, you're mustering up the ability to, to, the wherewithal to take responsibility for your emotions and lead with your heart, the challenge is still to shine your light brightly. And that really could be a challenge for some, well, it is a challenge, especially in today's world. I mean, think about it. Coming out of that whole lesson of conformity, that was the whole problem to begin with. I can't shine, I feel like I can't shine my light. I'm speaking hypothetically here, but I feel like, or ex, this person feels like that they cannot shine their light because we are not into individuals around here. You are going to fit in the way we think you should fit in, the way we feel is acceptable, and you're just gonna deal with it. And if you don't like it, you're gonna be excommunicated, excommunicated or ostracized. And that's not what we are looking to embody in the world anymore. We're looking to be ourselves, to be individuals, to let our lights shine, and to work together, to let all of our different lights come together and make this beautiful tapestry of different colors and different people and different experiences and different ways of being and whatnot, whatever. I mean, that's who we are naturally. So yeah, this definitely could be very, very challenging for you, Scorpio, but it's a challenge worth, worth undertaking. And especially with that Knight of Cups that came out in the beginning in your, over, in your pre shuffle, the very first card of that, I feel like you are absolutely stepping into this power and overcoming this challenge, all right? You're in the process of doing so. Knight of Wands is coupled with the Two of Wands. There's that Two of Wands again. So there's also some sort, well, there you go, the decision of whether or not to shine your light. Boop, there you have it. That is the decision, it looks like, maybe even one of the decisions that someone is working on making here. Okie dokie. Your closing message or potential outcome in the first Jesus, Christmas, half of your reading. Sorry, I just dropped my Christmas. Ugh. Okay. Your closing message or potential outcome in the first half of your reading here, you have... Ah, ooh, I like that. Ten of Swords. The worst is behind you, Scorpio. And, and some of you are saying to me, I don't get it. What do you mean the worst is behind me? I'm still, I'm still dealing with some stuff. I'm still facing some stuff. That's the point, Scorpio. You're facing it now. The worst of it is over, and now you can start to look at it and make amends with it, complete the cycle, whatnot, whatever. Ten of Swords. The worst is behind you because now you have the light of truth illuminating the circumstances for you, and you can start to make some cuts. Okay? Ace of Swords. Ten of Swords is coupled with all right, well, yeah, see, I know it, I knew it. Nine of Swords, okay. It's okay, Scorpio, <laughs> it's all right. Regardless of whatever happened in this cycle, everything is okay. The Nine of Swords 
is saying to you, don't let your fear, don't let fear get you down. All right? It's all just an illusion. And quite frankly, whatever you seem to be afraid of right now is really just a self-fulfilling prophecy. Don't allow your mind to continue generating or giving any of that any more momentum. All right? The worst is behind you. I wonder, even if, because I kind of want to say, even if you're at an Eight of Swords position right now, or you're in an Eight of Swords energy right now, which is mental entrapment, feeling like you're caged in, you have the ability to cut yourself out of that Ace of Swords. We'll see if the Eight of Swords comes out for the rest of the reading here, but you have the ability. You are progressing. You're progressing, Scorpio. It's, it's coming to an end. I promise you it's coming to an end. But you have to be the one to end it, okay? The universe can only set you up for you to make the decisions to bring things to a close. The universe, even though the, we have like situations like a tower moment in which the universe comes around to destroy some things if you need it to because you're not choosing, the universe can still only do so much because yes, the universe can come and, and, and tear, something down, tear something down, but then you have the ability to build it right back up again. Okay, so the universe can really only set you up for you to make the decisions for yourself. You have to be the one to follow through. Okay, that is all that is necessary. You have to be willing to follow through too. Probably, I just probably just re repeated myself. <laughs> anyway, let's move forward. So getting into the second half of your reading here. First set of surrounding energies for you, Scorpio. Okay, six of pentacles. So right now, it seems that reciprocity is the focus. And it almost feels like, especially with this Ace of Swords and Judgment, I kind of get an energy of you kind of looking at your landscape, looking at your surroundings, the people around you, your friends, your family, your coworkers, your job, your career of choice, your career trajectory, maybe how you've been conducting yourself in work, in love, in relationships, all in all that stuff. And especially I'm getting a focus on the people around you, the circumstances around you, and working on understanding just how reciprocal they may be or they may not be okay okay six of pentacles is coupled with ooh, the six of cups all right so if you have a soulmate situation here going on i feel like it, the past it really may not have been too balanced I, I'm almost feeling an energy of seeking a way to balance out a soulmate situation or seeking a way to maybe rectify, rectify the past. Because the Six of Cups does talk about soulmates, but it also talks about the past reminiscing and childhood. And I'm, I'm, I'm just hearing, Scorpio, I'm hearing bringing balance into a soulmate relationship. I really feel like that is your, your focus right now. And you're asking yourself, how do I do that? Okay, second set of surrounding energies for you, Scorpio. You have, aw, the Four of Wands. All right, Four of Wands is a union energy. The Four of Wands represents balance. It represents foundation. It represents being able or being in a position to celebrate, yes, celebrate how far you've come, but also recognize that the work is not done yet because there's still, you know, you do not rest on your laurels because there's still work to be done. But this is definitely kind of like a checkpoint energy. Um, Congratulating for yourself for building a foundation like this. Strong spiritual foundation too. That's a good thing. That's helping you undertake all of this. That's beautiful. Four of Wands is coupled with. Okay, excellent, the Six of Swords. And that's just what I was saying. This spiritual foundation for you here is allowing you to undertake all of what's going on here, i.e., moving away from rough waters to calmer waters, leaving the past behind you, going through some sort of healing process, okay? I do, especially the way the cards are oriented here, I do feel like you are moving towards some sort of um, union um, energy, okay? Because the Four of Wands does talk about, uh, is a union energy, you know, you do have that 1111 thing here, right? Because you, and it's 1111 and it's because these wands look like the number 11 and the number 11, all right? So we could be talking about twin flames, counterparts, but also, I mean, just soulmates, right? Just soulmates. Yeah, and you have three sixes. <laughs> That's cool. Okay. 
I really do feel like you're moving towards this, Scorpio. You're moving towards some sort of union and balanced energy, okay? Your challenge in the second half of your reading here, the Nine of Pentacles, asserting your independence, being independent, standing strong and firm in your independence. That is a challenge. That is a challenge because especially um, when, you know, when you are an individual like that, you tend to become a, a target for those that want to tear you down. Okay, so it's, it takes a lot of wherewithal to stand in your truth, stand in your power, and honor who you truly are. But ultimately, that's the ideal situation, to be quite honest. Why do you think so many would want to tear you down because of it? I mean, hello. <laughs> okay. Um, Nine of Pentacles is also a Virgo energy. I'm feeling strongly compelled to say that. Take that as it resonates for you. <clears throat> Nine of Pentacles is coupled with... Mm, the Four of Cups. This feels like FOMO, fear of missing out. And it almost feels like, I just got a flash of this, so this is for someone, this, this really is not for everyone, I'm assuming. It's probably for a very small few of you, if not like one or two of you, but um, I feel like somebody is afraid to stand in their independence because they feel like they're gonna miss out on something. Do you really wanna involve, be involved in something that will only allow you to be involved if you're if you conform to their way of thinking, being, or whatnot. Like, honestly, honestly, what is so compelling about whatever it is you want to be a part of, or af are afraid of missing out on something because of? What is so compelling about that that you have to lose your identity for it? You have to be someone that you're not just to have it. Like, what? What? Ew. I mean, I personally, uh, this is, I'm, uh, now, this is Eric speak, speaking personally. This is not the reader, okay? This is Eric speaking personally. And it's like, no, I don't want to be a part of anything in which I can't be my true self. D no, I don't need it. You can keep it. That's fine. So I don't really understand. I don't understand this energy, um, but that's okay. It's not for me to understand. We're I'm doing this reading for you. Um, but that's kind of what this feels like. But see, this is just a challenge. This is not saying that this is when you step into your power. Good gosh, the cops are all about it today. Um, <laughs> sorry guys. Uh, when you're, this, this is an illusion. This is illusionary, okay? When you step into your power, you're not gonna miss out on anything. You're actually going to be in a better, you're gonna be in greater alignment for that which is truly meant to be for you, right? But the challenge here is to step into your power and stand in your independence and autonomy regardless of what that might mean in the external. Okay, closing message or potential outcome in the second half of your reading here, Scorpio. Queen of Wands, okay, I like that energy. Confident, sexy, social butterfly, exuberant, magnetic. Um, to me, it, uh, she's magical. To me, the Queen of Wands is the physical embodiment of the law of attraction because it's about being in alignment with that which you, that who you, that who you are, but also um, what you want in life and allowing that to flow to you. Yes, the feminine energy represented by the Queen of Wands is a flowy energy, or I'm sorry, is a receptive energy, right? Being in the receptive mode for that which you truly desire. But the, also this could be, this could, I, I, I'm kind of getting a vibe of this is someone else. This is not necessarily you, Scorpio, or if you're the cross, cross watcher watching for a Scorpio, whatever, whomever the subject matter this is for, I feel like this Queen of Wands is another person that I feel like you're gonna be attracting into your life. Queen of Wands is coupled with, yup, the Wheel of Fortune. I kind of feel like, Scorpio, you are making some necessary changes in your life represented by the Wheel of Fortune that's going to make, that's going to attract this Queen of Wands into your life. Queen of Wands represents, um, is Aries energy, so you could be dealing with an Aries or another fire sign, Leo or Sagittarius, but also the sign really doesn't have anything to do with it. 
okay? Um, it's just the embodiment of who this person is. This person is very charismatic, is very confident in themselves, knows who they are, truly honors that. Um, these are just, these are just uh, qualities or characteristics that I'm getting, that I'm feeling for this person that's represented by this Queen of Wands. I, and I, what I, uh, to be quite honest, Scorpio, what I'm feeling here is you or someone else is making some necessary changes to attract this Queen of Wands back into their lives. And that is not a bad thing at all. That's actually quite beautiful. And ooh, I just heard this is something that she's wanted the whole time. She never wanted, this Queen of Wands energy never wanted you or whomever we're talking to here to be anything less than who you truly are. Point blank, period. That is the only thing she has ever required of you. Well, let's not go that far. There may have been some other things that she required, but that's the biggest. That's the biggest one, okay? All right, Scorpio. So let's get your guidance, your, your Oracle guidance here for the month of November. All right, last shuffle for my Scorpios. Here we go. Woo! Hold, hold on, hold on, that was too much. Let's try this again. All right, for my Scorpios, Oracle Guidance for the month of November 2019, for my Scorpios. There it is. Okay. Card number 20. Uh, Unseely Queen. I think I pronounced that correctly. Glamour, opulence, and humorous, right? I'm sorry, hubris. Glamour, opulence, hubris. Let us see here. Ah, the words can cut so deep and those in power can be so cruel. They have resources and display their status with pride. They seem to lack all compassion and to care only for how they appear and how much they can control others. Because of their glamour, their wealth, their pride, they seem to hold all the power in this situation. Therefore, at this time, your self-esteem ha may have been substantially damaged. There may have been harsh words been spoken about or to you, and slowly, over time, the toxic moments have woven together and cast a cloak of bitterness over your once hopeful heart. You feel wounded, resentful, and helpless. You may feel that if you confront this, you will be harmed, hurt, disempowered, blamed, or weakened. But you must honor your own point of view, value your side of the story, and take necessary steps to protect yourself. You can prevail as long as you approach the situation with the belief that you utterly deserve respect and self-love. The unseelie queen is invested in how things look. She can manipulate public opinion and make others feel very insecure and unstable. Take this card to mean that you have a great challenge ahead of you to restore your own sense of, I'm sorry, your, to restore your own self-love, to become less vulnerable by those who seek to hurt and distort, to unapologetically present your case. You are a good person. You are strong too. Do not let yourself be harmed any longer. You may need to consider leaving an abusive relationship, be open to counseling from a trusted professional, and work on rebuilding your own confidence to where it once was, shining and true. You can do this and return from the abyss you dwell now. And it's interesting because this energy is actually reflecting what I was seeing here in the Queen of Wands. So while, yes, I was picking up that the Queen of Wands does mostly feel like another person, it feels like you're starting to embody this as well. And then look, this is what we're talking, that's what this the Oracle card, card is saying here, okay? Excellent. So there you have it, Scorpio. I'm going to have to say that was a beautiful reading for your birthday. But anyway, I hope you guys have a great month. Again, if you would like to look into your own personal situation, please don't hesitate to email me. All the information is in the description box below. But with that said, I hope you guys have a fantastic month. And I look forward to connecting with you again for our next reading for the month of December. Wow. Yeah? Okay. Mwah! Bye.